Get In Loser, we're recreating ourselves for 2024 despite being overwhelmed and lazy. Maybe you told yourself you were gonna get your shit together after binging Becoming That Girl 2024 Extreme Reset. Get ahead of everyone else before January Extreme Glow Up and other similarly titled videos. But you fell into the black hole of time distortion between Christmas and New Year's and now it's way past January 1st and you feel like you've missed your opportunity to make 2024 the best year of your fucking life. Like that's not an impossible and unrealistic expectation to put on top of your entire year. Let me tell you right now that it may not be January anymore. The year isn't over. You still have 11 months to ruin your entire life or make it better. I'm not here to tell you what to do, but I am here to tell you that if you're a bit late to the glow up game, this video is going to give you a really quick and simple little system to get some intentions together for the rest of the year so that you've got like a little compass, like a spicy little roadmap that you can follow to get yourself out of the post-January slump and re-motivate yourself and have some self-compassion for not glowing up before 2024 and getting ahead of everyone else. The system that I threw together for this video is comprised of three pillars. We have reset, reflect, and recreate. Love a good alliteration. What I'll be doing is I'll give you one mandatory task for each one of these pillars and multiple options to choose from for the one task that you're gonna do. I'm also gonna talk about myself a lot. I hope that's cool because I'm gonna do that. Before we recreate ourselves we must first clear away what we don't want to bring in to the rest of the year. The task for you is to pick one area of your life to reset, to refresh, to declutter. Every year I do clothes. Here is a picture of me last year doing this activity, looking cute and looking sweaty. I am also looking cute and also looking sweaty. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of fucks that year so only tackled my closet. So if you're low on fucks too, doing the wardrobe only and calling it a day is amazing. So good. Um, I also decluttered my clothes again this year because unfortunately I have a shopping addiction which is not cute. If you're wondering why I have no b-roll of me sorting any of my clothes, well unfortunately it's really hot. I had to do the task in my underwear. I'm not here to start an OnlyFans. Here's an accurate PG version of how this probably looked for you. Pick an area of your life that you just collect things. I definitely don't feel that fresh start feeling if I'm bringing in things I bought last year that I probably shouldn't have. Clothes, clutter, emotional support, box of cables, snacks in your pantry and you need to clear out all the expired food. You know, maybe you develop a dairy allergy and so you have to get rid of all the yogurt in your fridge. I don't know. I don't know what your life is like. Books, makeup, decor, what else do people collect? I don't know, mementos from ex-lovers. Whatever you got. But is going through all your physical shit too much? Well, I got you. I got you. It's okay. I understand. You don't want to get out of bed today. We can do a digital declutter instead. We're going to be unfollowing creators that no longer align with your ideal self's consumption preferences, i.e. they no longer spark joy, or maybe they make you feel bad about how you look, or they make you buy things that you don't need, or, or you know, you just don't vibe with them anymore. And that's okay. We all change as human beings and our follow preferences change as well. So blah, blah, blah. It's literally so easy. I know after this video, you're just gonna doom scroll something anyway. But instead of doing that, you can unfollow people and feel like you did something with your life. Clear out your downloads folder on your computer, your desktop. Now that you've either decluttered your physical or your digital space or both, it's time to reflect on the past year and take stock of our present selves. This is important because in order to move forward, we kind of need to know where we currently are um, so we can point ourselves in the right direction instead of just walking ahead aimlessly. I'm going to present to you a few exercises. You pick one that you like the most. If you did resolution slash a uh, vision board last year, we're just going to go through them and do a little review using me as an example. 
Ooh, okay. I will go more into the prompts and stuff I use later. I'm just reading through my resolutions, seeing what came true and the things that didn't eventuate, I reevaluate, like, do I still want to do them? So my theme for 2023 was nourish. I like to do like one word for the entire year. Other years I've had happiness, I've had freedom. Let me tell you, the happiness year didn't it was a very unhappy year. I want to nourish my body, my heart and my soul, my relationships and my art. So I did a lot of random creative projects. I took up crochet, I took up scrapbooking and junk journaling and I also continued my regular digital art practice, tried YouTube. How do I want to evolve in 2023? I want to become healthy, alive, energized, nourished. I want to feel like I'm killing it, more motivated to go after my desires, focus, manage my time better and to do more art which let me tell you I didn't I didn't do a lot of those a lot of those didn't actually happen I would try to do healthy living eating healthy exercising then I would get sick and then I would derail all my progress this year would probably be more about immunity rather than just like eating well and exercise and like gonna focus more on not getting sick. What do I want to release in 23? I wanted to not drink as much. I wanted to not smoke as much. I wanted to curb my shopping addiction, which I definitely didn't do. Staying up late for no reason. That one I kind of did. The morning routine really worked for me, so I want to continue doing that. Eventually I want to be able to wake up at like 6.37 and then do my whole morning routine and then go to work at 9. I think that would be ideal because because I don't have a very mentally demanding job, but like it kind of is, but I would rather use my like freshest focus time on myself instead of rolling out of bed at 8.55 to then start working. Let me tell you, if you wanna hate your life, do that. It sucks. <laughs> also, one of my goals for this year was to do some interstate conventions. Yeah, just kind of like try and revitalize my Instagram a little bit. I hate Instagram so much. So I gave it a good shot again this year. And you know what? Instagram isn't coming with me in 2024. I set myself very vague goals, more like some principles and suggestions to live by rather than like, I want 10,000 followers on Instagram and I want five thousand dollars in my savings because I feel like when I put numbers like that it makes me stress because I'm not very likely <laughs> to achieve the exact number or even get close so I just don't do that anymore. Having a quick glance over to see what feelings I was trying to evoke, seeing what kind of came true. Here's a cute pic of me and my boy fee. I just wanted to cultivate more effort into my relationship. This one is like a convention artist alley table. I really wanted to re-motivate myself to do conventions again. Just some like vibey ass images because want to feel royal, want to feel pretty and cute. This is a picture of my altar. It doesn't look like this anymore, but I really wanted to enhance my spiritual practice. I got really into spells um, last year and I just wanted to continue on with that. I also had like a little dream of creating an oracle card deck, which definitely didn't eventuate. I only did four artworks last year and you know, you need at least 50 for an oracle card deck. <laughs> like cute outfits and some more vibes because I feel like taking outfit photos is another form of self-expression and creativity and that's one of the areas that I wanted to nourish for the year. Around June I actually ended up refreshing my vision board. Here I put in a picture of Japan. I literally just slapped that on there not really thinking anything of it and then in October I was like I have to go to Japan right now. The, the, the 15 year old dream, she's coming true. She's coming true immediately. I was in a photo shoot of that year. So one of the photos I put back onto my vision board to like not necessarily manifest more photo shoots, but just, you know, for vibes. Okay, I'm really here for the vibes. <laughs> 
And I really wanted to take self-care and exercise and wellness a lot more seriously. So this area just became dedicated to the Pink Pilates Princess aesthetic. I definitely didn't feel like I was taking my health seriously at the beginning of the year, even though it was one of my resolutions. So when I did the like mid-year review, so some of the things that were kind of left outstanding are brought to the forefront. That was my year last year. I just kind of look through them, see what worked, what didn't work, and you can just leave it at that. But if you want to take it a step further, here are three quick journal prompts you can fill out just to create a little summary and review. So the prompts are, what were the highlights and accomplishments? What was I most grateful for? Or what were my top three memories? What needs to be left in 2023? What was draining? What didn't work? Or what kept me stuck? Overall, 2023 was, you can add in a word, add in a sentence paragraph, an essay to give you an idea of how I would answer these. My top three favorite memories was meeting Mike Terry from Volumes, was going to Japan, and was the Valentine's Day that my boyfriend treated me to. What needed to be left in 2023 for me? Pretty much like not having time management skills. I like stuff and I don't want to buy so many things. Overall, 2023 was awesome. I feel like I did a lot, even though I was like, oh, this was a whole bunch of stuff I didn't do. Like, I still feel like I made a lot of progress, especially compared to other years, because in other years I would set myself up for failure. <laughs> We're on the alternate exercise. What this exercise is, we're essentially just taking a little stroll down memory lane. Yeah, for each month, either pick a few of your favorite photos and put them into your favorites or into another folder or, you know, be extra. You can print them out. You can put them in Notion. We're essentially just creating a highlight reel. What I did was I threw my favorite photos, any artworks that I did for the year and any YouTube videos that I made into a Notion board and they're just kind of arranged by month. Once this is all collated, then you can just, you can have a little doom scroll. You can have a little scrolly scroll. If you really, really don't want to do that, or you really can't be bothered, you can just, you just scroll through your camera roll. <laughs> scroll through your camera roll, scroll through your IG feed, read your old journal entries. Now that there's some space in our lives, and now that we've reflected and reviewed and looked back, we can now look forward. I'm going to give you a few goal setting exercises. Pick the ones that resonate with you the most and do the others for extra credit if you want. Word of the year. You pick one word for the year that acts as a compass for your smaller goals. My word for this year is create. It could be self-care, it could be happiness, freedom, space. Last year I chose the word nourish because, well, let's just say in the year before that my theme was happiness and I experienced probably the most acute amount of unhappiness and spent 2023 recovering from that. So this year I recognize the amount of care and patience that I had with myself last year to heal and create stability and foundation. Now I can like build upwards. <laughs> For the second exercise, it is three journal prompts that complement the first activity, which is the word slash theme of the year. How do I want to evolve? What do I want to release? And what are the main three to five goals that will help me embody my theme? And why do I want to achieve them? Identify the underlying problem that you believe the goal that you're setting is addressing. So I'm just going to quickly talk through my answers for this, how I want to evolve. I want to feel vibrant, healthy, motivated and unstoppable. I want to trust that the things I want want me back and I want to evolve into the healthiest version of myself and be superhuman. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's not lofty or it's going to set me up for failure, is it? Um, what do I want to release in 2024? I want to release the fear of failure and then my main three to five goals. Number one is give YouTube a solid shot so that I can say that I've tried so I won't have to wonder because I think it maybe it's viable and I think my voice and my art have a place on this platform and the underlying problem that I feel like it will address for me is that I'm 
I feel purposeless and I want to do something art related and I don't actually know what I want to do specifically. I tried doing conventions, I've tried doing clothing business, I've tried just grinding on Instagram and I've tried YouTube before but I was not very consistent with it. This goal that I've assigned to try and solve this problem I actually don't know if it'll work. <laughs> so yeah well, well, like the, when, it, when I do the thing at when I do the review at the end of the year, we'll see, we'll see. I'll let you know. Goal number two, get my vitality back, improve my immune system with better food, supplement exercises and rituals. I want to be that girl. I want to be the pink Pilates princess. I want to be everything that your mother told you not to be. Because the underlying problem is that I get sick so easily and for so long that any other generic health habits that I try and create are completely derailed because I am just knocked out for so long. And the third goal is go to Japan for at least 10 days twice in one year. What that will entail for me is increasing my income and being more mindful with my budgeting. <laughs> so that one's a bit hectic because I went for seven days last year and I was that, that was not enough. So this year I really want to do it again and I think it's possible but I just have a very bad problem with buying things that are in front of me and not saving that money for the future. <laughs> The underlying problem that I feel like this will solve is one like curbing my spending addiction because now I have something to save towards that isn't so lofty and unattainable like a house. <laughs> I crave some excitement in my life. Hopefully, hopefully that's kind of what it will solve. So if you find it challenging coming up with three to five goals just kind of out of thin air air <laughs> or you, if you need some more clarity you might want to also tack on this next exercise which is the wheel of life. There are wheel of life exercises that you can do and you've probably seen other people doing. You can google a worksheet if you want. The original exercise doesn't take that long but if you can't be bothered I'm going to put a list of a few categories on screen. What you're going to do is rate them 1 to 10. Take note of the three lowest scores and those are going to be our focus. Just work on the lowest three so that you can see the most improvement. If you want to do all categories, that's fine too. But you know, I love to do the bare minimum. Personally, my lowest three were finances because I like stuff a little too much. But the stuff that I buy doesn't really bring a lot of meaningful happiness into my life and my apartment is full of fucking shit. I want to spend money on meaningful experiences instead like traveling and investing in the stock market and saving money for my future. <laughs> Purpose. You can watch my why I quit my art biz video if you want more information but essentially ever since I stopped side hustling and started undoing a lot of the distorted productivity programming from binging too much marketing bro content back in 2018, I have found myself purposeless. Last year I gave Instagram anime conventions another shot but I no longer feel fulfilled from doing these activities anymore. They feel more like an obligation to my past self to not let these things die because they were a part of me for so long and I invested so much money and time and effort into them. And lastly, health. During the past few years, health for me has always ranked pretty low, but I honestly never feel like working on my health. I really want to enter my Pink Pilates Princess era, even if it stops being trendy because the aesthetic really resonated with me. After you have identified your bottom three areas, we are going to create one to three goals for each. I also like to do this for all categories as a way of passive manifesting. Wouldn't it be fun if these things also came true without me actively pursuing it? These are all creative exercises by the way. I'm throwing this disclaimer in here because I always viewed resolutions as some form of weird punishment to my past self where I felt like I performed so badly the last year that I was going to punish myself this year with unrealistic resolutions that ultimately set myself up to fail and perpetuate the I'm not good enough narrative which created distrust in myself. 
that's why the reflection portion that you do before the recreate portion is so important because you need to evaluate who you currently are so that you know where you can go you like you can't go from zero to a hundred in terms of recreating yourself into your best self i mean all you can if you can do this i don't know why you're watching this video <sighs> okay vision board and vision board alternatives i want to preface that i know that not everyone's a visual person and there are other non-visual tools that you can create instead of the vision board but ideally you create something that you can interact with every day that helps you connect to your desires or your intention. If you're more of an auditory person, you can record your own subliminals, record your affirmations as I am statements, i.e. as if they've already happened. So it's like, I am smart, I am strong, I am a CEO of a successful business, I'm fucking hot, and then overlay music on top that's the gist of it go google an actual tutorial writing out your affirmations say your affirmations into a glass of water and then drink the water you can create an altar that engages your senses the point of this activity is to pick a modality that engages your preferred sense we're creating a sensory experience of your choice that, like a vision board, reminds you every day of your intentions so your subconscious can work out how they're going to happen in the background. But my preferred modality is vision boards, so we're going to go into that. You're going to need Canva for arranging things together. And for images, you'll need Pinterest, your own photos, your own photos are the best because they are captured from your point of view, which makes it easier for your subconscious to connect with imagery. I have photos for romance, magic, Japan and health that I took this year and I'm including those because I want to cultivate even more of the same. However, last year I didn't have my own pictures for any of these intentions, but as they came true then I could replace them with my own pictures, which I think is better. For example, is now that I've actually gone to Japan, I can use my own pictures of Japan to manifest this again, because I know it's possible because I've done it before. If you don't have your own photos, when choosing them on Pinterest, find ones that feel realistic for you to replicate. I want to exercise more. I really want to embody that pink Pilates princess lifestyle. So hopefully throughout the year, I can create some memories as evidence to myself that I did the intention <laughs> and then I can use it as leverage next year to inspire myself and to continue that momentum. But see, if I had chosen a picture of a girl wearing all black, lifting a bajillion weights, even though like, yeah, I want to be able to do that. It doesn't seem like the most realistic step for me right now. And I don't personally feel like I'll find it motivating. These cute pink Pilates princess pictures seem realistic and doable to me. And it doesn't seem that far away from my current lifestyle. And I'm sure you're thinking, oh, Tracy, but how can I manifest something that I've never manifested before if I don't have a fucking photo of it okay well look I am not against putting your big ass unrealistic like dreamiest dreams on your vision board even if they seem completely out of reach okay so for a while Japan was this big ass impossible dream and it took me well over 15 years to manifest big ass dream that I want to try and start manifesting is buying an apartment the way I'm going to do this is instead of finding a random house on Pinterest, I'm going to go on to a property buying website and find properties there. For now, I'm going to pick the lowest entry point into my overall property buying dream, which is a small one bedroom modern apartment in a suburb that I like. I'm no longer manifesting a generic Pinterest dream apartment. I'm manifesting something that already exists in my reality, even if I don't buy this particular apartment one day. I hope that makes sense. If you really can't find anything and you just need the Pinterest dream version to put on your vision board, that's fine. But what I prefer 
occur is to remove barriers to believability so that it's easier for your subconscious mind to get on board with your vision. We're aiming for things that are a step up from your current reality rather than just dissociating into the dreamland that is Pinterest which can seem unattainable. I think this was a bit convoluted so if you have any questions let me know. For the highest ROI on your effort create a vision board to fit the lock screen for your phone since it's the smallest size you don't need a lot of pictures and you will see it every time you reach for your phone to do your daily doom scroll. I personally identify as an e-girl so I'm creating it to the size of my monitor to put as the new tab picture on Google Chrome. This is because my desktop looks like this most of the time and thank you for watching through all of that i hope it helped you i hope you felt like more motivated to continue on with the rest of your year if you like waited this long to create resolutions you just let january be a dumpster fire if it was a dumpster fire for you you don't have to put it out you just have to walk away i try to make it make sense as much as possible if you want to see more videos like this let me know down below and yeah, I'll see you later. Bye.